Hi, I'm B for Next Mechanics, and welcome to part one of a four-part series on 3D printing a custom transforming Optimus Prime figure. So normally my videos are about 10 to 15 minutes long. Those are the sort of videos I enjoy watching and the sort of videos I enjoy making. But I've had a few requests from people like Boku Kerbal and Just Georgia XD asking for a more in-depth look at the process. I'm going to be doing four distinct videos, each focusing on a unique part. What you're watching here is the introduction and the initial planning and sketching phase. The second video is going to focus more on the early 3D modeling block phase, showing how to use software like FreeCAD and, you know, figuring out measurements and things. The third video is going to be all about 3D printing that block model and how to learn what works and doesn't work to get the best tolerances. And the final video is going to be detailing the whole model in Blender and finishing it all up. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. If you've owned a Lego set or a Barbie doll or any kind of toy, you probably came across these particular types of mechanisms for hinges and movement. We've got ball joints, pen swivels, mushroom pegs, universal joints, butterfly hinges, and sliders. Each of these joints has their own pros and their own cons, so let me explain what those are with these 3D printed demonstrations. Ball joints are ones you'll likely see in a lot of toys. They only consist of two parts, a ball and a socket, and they have a wide range of movement despite the limited parts count. The only downside is that they can wear down and get loose over time, quite quickly. Next up is pin swivels. Using two pieces, one rests inside the other, connected via a pin. This means you can get a nice rotation movement and is quite robust. The only downside is, well, it only rotates on that one direction, so it's quite limited in terms of posability. If you collect Transformers figures, you've often came across mushroom pegs. They're named as such because of their appearance of a mushroom cap. A second piece with a socket for the mushroom goes around, allowing for a rotation movement. Much like the pin swivel, their only downside is that they're limited to that rotation. Next we've got butterfly hinges. They're very similar to pin swivels, but the two pieces line up flush when they're extended either way. Next up is universal joints. These are a combination of pin swivels and mushroom pegs. It means that you can get the same amount of movement as a ball joint, but it tends to be a lot more robust and a lot easier to 3D print. The only downside is that instead of having just a ball and socket, you have a lot higher parts count, and if you're using this type of joint for a lot of sections on your figure, your parts count's gonna go up very quick. Finally, we've got sliders. Again, they're like pin swivels, but the slot for the pin is stretched, allowing the piece to slide down it like a track. These are typically more tricky to assemble on mass and are less strong than just normal pin swivels. So now that we know what hinge does what, it's time to break out the sketch pad and start drawing our concepts. One thing I want to make very clear right off the bat, don't click off the video because, oh, you can't draw. These drawings are never going to be seen in the final product. It doesn't matter what your art style is, or what you, lack for a better word, deem the quality of your art is, as long as you're able to convey the idea, that's all that matters. Since I'm creating a figure with a character that already exists, Optimus Prime, and specifically his G1 version, I know what parts are supposed to go where based off of animations from the cartoon. And so, understanding where parts need to be in both modes, I now need to figure out what joints are going to let those pieces get to A to B as easily and as efficiently as possible. I highly recommend when you're first starting to learn this stuff to take a look at some pre-existing figures if you own any. You don't need to take your figure apart, just try and see if there's any obvious pieces you can spot, like a mushroom peg in the thigh, or a ball joint for the wrist. This will help give you a better understanding of what's common and works in engineering these types of figures. You might notice in my sketches that pieces like, say, the windows are separate from the window frames, even though once they're all assembled, they should be right next to each other, right? They should all be one piece. That's because my models in particular, I split up depending on the colors, meaning that you can just print them in the plastic color you want. 
or if you still want to paint it, it's already masked off for you. You don't need to spend ages fiddling with tape. While you're doing this, you might be asking yourself, why on earth am I just drawing right now? Surely I should be modeling. And the quick answer is, because it's hard. 3D modeling is hard. 3D modeling Transformers is really hard. And so trying to iterate and problem solve on paper is so much faster and so much quicker. This will never get seen in the final product. This is for your eyes only. With Transformers in particular, there's so many ways to do the same design. I mean, you've seen how many G1 styled Optimuses there are, right? So feel free to take inspiration from those figures. It's not cheating to look at how the wheel's been done before, right? There's no need to reinvent it. And then the next step is to ask yourself, why are they using that joint? If you're able to figure that part out, you're gonna save yourself a lot of headaches. Now finally, the biggest thing with sketching and concept art for your Transformers figures, don't feel beholden to your sketches. When you go to model, things are gonna turn out to not work in practice. Things might not be able to actually fit because you've not drawn it at the correct scale. Something I know no experience of, what do you mean? So make sure you always have that sketchbook always by you as often as you can. You could be trying to go to sleep at 12.30 and suddenly have an idea for a color-changing eyeball system. You never know when inspiration's gonna strike. So, make sure you're always prepared for when it does. So I hope you found this beneficial, and if you did, make sure you subscribe so you see part two. I'm gonna be showing you the basics on freehand and how parametric sketch-based modeling works. That will not be a tutorial on how to use FreeCAD. That will be an introduction to what parametric modeling is and what the process of creating a Transformer figure is like in it. Tips and tricks specific to that. Otherwise, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Farewell! So, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Farewell!